Hi there. On Wednesday evening during Cast Iron Wednesday on YouTube Live, we had a lot of fun making a lot of cornbread and it all came out great. And we ended up using quite a few cast iron pans, as you can see. Uh, yeah, I somehow managed to dirty all of these pans on one, in one session. Uh, some of them were kind of like collateral damage as uh, cornbread batter uh, dripped into some of the pans. Others were definitely uh, used to make uh, this cornbread. And uh, it was commented during the live session, you know, why don't you do a video showing you actually washing those uh, cornbread pans? Because some of those pans are actually pretty notorious to clean. And uh, we would like to see how you clean up those uh, cornbread pans. So I figured, okay. And uh, to make this uh, extra special, I hope, I've had the silly idea of doing this all in one live shot. Um, I'm going to be filling this pretty much unbroken, and my hope is that will help get these pans washed <laughs> faster so that uh, you can see what it's like to clean cast iron pans in real time. And with that, let's move over to the sink where I have my uh, trusty chainmail scrubber handy. And we are definitely going to put it through uh, its paces in the next few minutes. And with that, here we go. Let's start out with Birmingham Stove and Range number five. Number five Y. Yes. Wow, that sure didn't take long, did it? And with that, we pop this on the stove. I should also turn the uh, oven on to about uh, 225 degrees because uh, there are only four uh, stovetop burners here and more than four cast iron pans to clean. So that starts number one. Let's move on to number two. <clears throat> This one was, or is, the uh, gate marked number seven. I call it lucky number seven. Uh, all I really did was uh, drip, get a few crumbs into this, so this will also be easy. I said that didn't take any time at all. Now we will just put this one on the burner to dry. <laughs> I just heard my cat sneeze. Okay, from here, excuse me one second, you okay, Moki? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Just making sure my cat's okay. All right, let's get to. <coughs> The other BSR number five, this is number no, this is 5N or no. I have pants that I call yes and no. So far, so good. Of course, I like to think that the seasoning on this pan, maybe I should do this one a, just a wee bit more. There we go. I like to think that the seasoning on this pan helps. So let's do this one. Now let's get to the one that uh, everybody is interested in because this is an infamous one. And that is, of course, 
the cornbread skillet. This is the famous history-making Birmingham Stoven Range cornbread skillet. It has some uh, stains from grease on it. Uh, the cornbread popped out very nicely. It's been pointed out, of course, you know, that uh, cleaning this pan can be a real pain because of these little uh, grooves here in the center. So let's give this a shot and see how it turns out. Getting the grease out. Yeah, getting these, uh, getting these grooves in the center is a, so much fun. That's one reason why I like this chainmail scrubber. It does a pretty good job of it. On the other hand, again, I have to admit there wasn't that much residue anyway. That cornbread popped out very nicely. And there we are. Here is our cornbread skillet. And all of the rest of these are going to have to go into the oven, which includes, I think we will get down to the worst one. Ah, the handy dan corn stick pan where I did a terrible job of uh, pouring the batter onto this pan and so all this stuff here is pretty much caked on. So let's take care of this, shall we? Hope the drain doesn't clog up. Guns and Roses said, all we need is just a little patience. And water everywhere though. But there we are. Here is our Handy Dan corn stick pan. This is also a famous one because it was only made for a few years in the late 1980s before BSNR went out of business. I have to pop this in the oven because there's no more room on this stove top burner. And with that, we only have a couple more left including this number three S BSR skillet. This one is a nice one here. This is of the uh, S series. Well, it's interesting. Again, the grease seems to have stained it. So let's get this thing nice and clean. For the record, I have had this uh, that chainmail scrubber for nine years. I got it in late uh, for a Christmas present in 2012. In fact, I really like it because you know the rings, the round rings on that chainmail scrubber, uh, means there are actually no sharp edges. So while it is certainly tough enough to uh, scrape all of the residue off of a pan, it is it will not actually scratch the seasoning. And with that, we only have a couple more. And that would be the Lodge, what I call my redneck pan. This is the Lodge 10-inch skillet that I use to bake that New England spider cake. 
you know, the sweet cornbread cake. This shouldn't take long at all either. And so far so good. Into the oven this one goes. And finally, I didn't even really use this one, but a few drops of batter got on it. This is the BSNR Red Mountain series. Uh, corn stick pan. You can tell it's a BSNR because of this uh, sp this particular shaped handle. And with that, let's quickly give this a, a little scrubbing. And there we are, into the oven this goes. All right, and with that, we will just come back in a few minutes for part two. After these pans are good and dry, we will then just grease them off and let them cool. Meow. And we will be done. Hi there. Welcome back to part two of this really exciting video on washing, drying, and, clean, and greasing cast iron. Uh, the washing part is already finished, and as you can see, that really wasn't too difficult. I mean, despite the way that those uh, pans were encrusted with cornbread batter, they cleaned up uh, with no difficulty at all. They have been drying on the stovetop to uh, take care of any moisture, and so now it's really just a matter of... Um, of uh, greasing them off so and then we will be done let's turn the oven off two three four now we move over to the counter here where I have a glove because yeah the, these pans are hot a rag and my trusty little cast iron dish here that I keep with Crisco especially for greasing these pans. I do not cook with this Crisco. This is only just for greasing the pans. And all we have to do is just dab a little bit on and away we go. Here is number here is uh, the BSR number five. Yes. As you can see this does not take long at all. And in fact, I can even use the other part of this rag to dry off uh, a little bit of the uh, extra grease. There we go. That's number one. And now for the fun one. Once again, the cornbread skillet, which has also been drying off. So, a little bit more, and yeah, this is going to be the fun one, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. Here's where I have to be careful here, especially because I have to get the grease again in those little grooves, which is not fun. Fortunately, this is a thick enough cloth that I am able to do so without burning my fingers too much. There we go. 
Just got to force it into the grooves. And a little around the edges. There we go. Now finally, to do this right, just a tiny bit on the back and around. And voila! Here is our newly cleaned cornbread skillet. Let's put this down. I'm crossing. Hello. Okay. Now comes number three. Again, all we need is a little dab. This one was the gate marked skillet. Well, it still is the gate marked skillet. It's one reason. Uh, some people don't grease their pans after washing. I like the look that you get with the uh, with the extra layer of grease on them. And I use Crisco rather than vegetable oil for uh, greasing my pans here because, as you know, vegetable oil can become rancid after a few days of uh, non-use. And with a big collection like mine, that's a real concern. Crisco, on the other hand, goes for a much longer period of time. I would probably say at least a couple of months before I have to worry about uh, reseasoning it. And there we go. That is a nice uh, gate mark number seven, which I call lucky. Lucky number seven. And then number four. After this, we will deal with the pins in the oven. And this is the other BSR number five. This is no. As I said, I have pans that I call yes and no. I once asked, should I give one of these, or get rid of one of these pans, sell it or give it away? And I was told, no. So as a result, I have two very nice looking Red Mountain number no. five pans. Now we head into the oven and pull something out. such as, once again, this is the 5S pan. So give this a nice grease here, coating on the front and the back. There we go. And with that, this is already looking much better. And as you can see, this really is not taking long at all, is it? Who said that cast iron was hard to uh, take care of? All right. Ugh. Now comes the other fun one. The handy Dan cornstick pan. Remember what that looked like a few minutes ago? Well, now, thanks to an easy coating of grease, this should actually... This is going to be a fun one because I think I'm going to need more grease than that. <clears throat> this, the other fun part is holding this thing up in front of the camera as I clean it. Because this is a thick and heavy pan. Got to be sure to get it into those grooves. There we go. And with that, ugh, like I said, oof little bit more for the back there we go and with this this should be nice enough to display as well as use although I do intend on getting a lot more use out of this one and I'm gonna put these back in the oven until they cool off Here's one. I actually forgot to wash this one on camera, as I found out. And that is the Six Wedge Cornbread Skillet. This is the one that BSNR produced for about a few years or so, between 1967 and maybe the early 1970s. 
after that point it was discontinued that's why you will never find a uh, six wedge cornbread skillet that says made in USA because it seems like either they were discontinued at the same time that BSNR uh, changed the marking from patent pending to made in USA or they were discontinued first this is why every one of these six wedge cornbread pans will say patent pending on the back again that dating would likely be 1967 the year they were introduced to sometime in the early 1970s so we've got a few years at least to uh, date this My good old redneck pan. As I've mentioned, this was the very first cast iron pan I ever owned and used. And good grief, this is, <laughs> I guess you could call it the 20th anniversary of this pan, at least in my possession, because I received it uh, as a present in March of 2002. So that means I have had this for <laughs> 20 years as of next month. It sat rusting on a shelf for eight years. That means I'm pleased to say I've spent more than half of its life in my kitchen using it. Finally, uh, the last one, and that is the BSNR corn stick pan. All we need to do once again with this is give it a nice and easy coating of grease. Coating of grease along those ridges. Uh, and with that, we're going to be all set. So, I hope I didn't bore you too much with this video. Very much encourage anyone and everyone to comment. Ask questions, answer questions, criticize my method. Do what you'd like, because half of the, not, not half, but I'd say a good part of owning and collecting cast iron is the history. I very much enjoy that. And I also enjoy your comments, so please go ahead and comment on this. Thank you very much. And there we go, folks. All of those cast iron pans are now clean. I will leave them here until tomorrow morning, put them away, and then we will do it all over again.